what's going on guys welcome back to a brand new video on the channel and start of today's video i'm going to give you guys the best 15 brawlers to max out for this season in ranked so you'll be glad to know there's no modifiers for this season no map pool changes as well thus far and there's not going to be balance changes at least until next week where there's going to be an update so things might shift then but for now here the best brawlers because by then you should be able to push at least close to masters or get masters if you're sweaty like me so let's start off with rico then rico's absolutely broken in ranked especially on some maps he's just crazy strong i mean i do say sometimes he can counter him but it's getting to the point now where he's just so obnoxious i don't even get a chance to play rico now because everybody just first picks him so much especially on brutal gem grab heist he's got hot potato there hot zone he's got a couple of good situations there as well but mainly in brutal he's just so good because you slap on the vision gear with him you slap on multiple launcher which just allows you to counter your counters and just shred through everything and then you've got a hype charge on top of that that can just team wipe with ease rico is such an easy brother to use right now definitely recommend maxing out so next up we have daryl so he's going to be better towards the end of draft normally as a sixth pick but daryl absolutely is still an s tip brother in this meta he recently got a hyper charge which doesn't really help him too much but still in some plays it will help him because of the speed and the shield boost that he does get but daryl you can pretty much play him everywhere as i said as a late pick as long as it's not a couple of damage dealers he can still get away with countering one of those damage dealers he's going to be a good asset it's a really good late pick in knockout it's going to be fantastic is a late option in gem grab and brubble as well heist as well later on in the draft there's just always a scenario to go daryl bounty as well and canal grande he's a fantastic option so much versatility to this brawler and with a recent rework to two supers it just allows him to win so many matchups i definitely recommend playing him this rank season so next up on the list we have 8 bit so it might be very surprising to some people but after taking a look at everyone's tier list i would say that 8 bit is probably in and around the b slash a tier right now and 8 bit you know his hyper charge i would say is personally underwhelming but some people think it's very strong and it can be annoying to some brawlers right but i just think the fact that he's got a hyper charge it's going to give him a speed boost which he desperately needs as well damage boost everything is going to be making better in heist and i've always thought that 8-bit is super slept on and because there are, there are a lot of tanks in this meta 8-bit can just shred through them so he's not the best in brawl because of the maps but he's really good gem carry and gem grab right now he's really underrated in heist you think of kaboom canyon safe zone bridge to far he's such a good asset you take a look at bounty he can be good paired with snipers and throwers and that's probably about it but again 8-bit is definitely a good option to max out because hardly anyone goes him in draft and i just end up winning all the time with him so next up on the list we have angelo so angelo is still really annoying in the meta right now especially in ranked because there's so many good maps for angelo we're talking like heist three of the four maps it's just angelo heaven he's able to go over the water so easily and there's a few other brawlers that have that mechanic now but still 4k damage to the face so easy it's the fact that as well two gadgets are just so versatile we take a look at gem grab as well he's a decent gem carrier not really the best but can still do a decent job bounty and knockout absolutely s tier so good on so many different situations and i always find people underestimate angelo and he's such a good pick you just gotta have good aim on the list we have a penny and penny is just going from strength for strength every single update now she was consistently a d tier brawler now she's a tier on the brink of s tier in my opinion the reason why is because of versatility for so many brawlers in rank that are so versatile that's what you want to aim for when you're drafting right you're going to make sure that your brawler is hardly countered by other brawlers because that can give you a better chance of winning and penny is definitely one of those she's just good at everything she doesn't completely excel at countering other brawlers she's just good so take, talk about brawl she can be good in some situations and really annoying basically maps where you can put your turret really defensively as long as not a ton of grass you can have a good value with penny again gem grab you can play her as a mid you can play her as a lane and hard rock mine etc you think of heist she can be pretty annoying on maps like hot potato kaboom canyon really good for just overall pressure talking bounty she can be good at mid option in bounty sometimes canal grandy as well can be pretty decent hot zone really good probably a best game mode especially with the turret just getting you so much value so many things to like about penny in this rank meta next up on the list we have gus and you absolutely must max him out for ranked right now i know i say this quite often with my rank guides but gus is so good so good in rank right now you take a look at world finals a month ago now he was the most played brawler there one of the most played brawlers just going to show how good he is and you can use gus everywhere that damage buff was just so good because of his main attack projectiles just so easy to hit combined with his kooka popper gadget combined with his shield which gives you so much health for a teammate there's just so much to like about gus it's getting to the point where i'm even seeing people use him in heist probably that's a bit too far but still 
He's just that good at killing people in a 1v1. It's just so hard to challenge him and beat him and take him down. Again, go through every single game mode and every single situation, and you can go Gus. So next up, we have Stu, and again, another brawler that's so good in ranked because of his versatility. We've seen right now in pro play, Stu is being first picked in so many different situations because that hype choice just allows him to make so many pop-off plays. And the thing about Stu is that, again, he's just so good in ranked because you can always adapt your build to whatever situation is going to happen. So, again, in like longer range matchups, you want to switch to zero drag stop power instead of gas to heal. You know, depending on the game mode and hot zone, you want to go with a speed turret. In other situations in brawl, you want to go breakthrough gadget. There's so much to like about him. And the hype charge has definitely made him an S tier brawler. He's just so good in ranked. So next up on the list, we have Max. And time and time again, I recommend you to max out Max because she's just so good in ranked. So versatile. And that will never change. There's hardly any bad matchups for Max, really. And because you can play her in every single game mode and every single situation, of course, she's going to be good in draft because that's the brawlers that you want in draft. You want those good versus hard brawlers, and Max is one of them. So the reason why Max is so good is because of a few things. First one is with her dash gadget that allows you to just tank so many different things and make aggressive plays. And then, of course, the hypercharge. So it's one of the few brawlers that I think really needs the hypercharge because of the fact that he's just so broken, so underrated. All three people grouped together, pop the hypercharge, Charge. that's basically a free super to everyone you can cycle it so quick it's just so broken and again a good max player can just make things happen great at countering snipers great for pressure on the map max is just a such a good brawler in rank so next up on the list we have gene so another brawler that's always on this list but i can't not make this video without putting gene because time and time again he's just one of the best brawlers and especially bounty and knockout time again i'm actually banning gene a lot now if the opponent gets first pick because you know there's other good picks and bounty and knockout like piper angelo etc but gene's by far the most toxic one the most consistent so again people don't really see him as this brawler that's that strong but because of his ability to just chip people down consistently paired with the vision gear paired with the super that just gets a free kill and bounty and knockout that can turn around games there's not really a lot of meta brawlers right now that can escape gene pool especially once the gadgets wear down he just gets even better so for me you must max him out we have larry so the twins are still so annoying in ranks right now and again it's because they're just so versatile you can pretty much play these guys everywhere and we're talking even on grassy maps in brubble you don't want to really first pick him there but you get what i mean he's just so adaptable you probably want to use the star power that gives you the extra reload from the twin pretty much every single time main reason being is because it's just so good you can increase your dps especially against tanks and counter them a lot of times you can switch your build depending on what mode and what map you're on so definitely recommend buying the vision gear with larry and laurie and then of course you can switch between damage and shield gear as well in terms of the maps you can play them everywhere any map that has a lot of walls of course they're going to be even better heist hot potato gem grab there's so many scenarios set for like double swoosh and even double swoosh you can use them to counter people hot zone very good right now knockout and bounty other throwers are a little bit better sometimes but still you can never go wrong with them in draft there's just hardly any brawlers that fully counter the twins so next up on the list we have frank and even though he still receives nerf after nerf he's still one of the best brawlers in the game right now and i just can't believe just how good he is ever since the rework it's just crazy so frank is one of my favorite brawlers in ranks again it's because people underestimate the power of frank a lot of people just play him wrong it's all about trying to time whenever you get pretty weak and then that's your time to really pounce on the opponent so whether you use the irresistible attraction gadget to get extra damage whether you just want to make plays with your super etc there's just so much power in frank brubble is absolutely s tier gem grab better later on in the draft but still really good in pretty much every scenario hot zone he's so good because he's so tanky he can get on the zone with ease especially with his hypercharge as well there's so much to like about frank so next up on the list we have amber and amber is so good in ranked and draft in general in terms of pro play they play amber so much because there's hardly any bad matchups for her and again you can always switch over to build whether you want to go with the speed gadget most of the time you'll use dancing flames though because you can just get so much damage against the brawlers that counter you but again you take a look at the maps and situations you can play amber everywhere outside of knockout and bounty and there's not really a ton of bad matchups for her. I mean, snipers are probably the biggest counter to her, but still, you can easily get pressure onto them as well. So good at everything. Definitely one of the best brawlers in rank. Next up on the list, we have Juju. So this is the one that really puzzles me because not a lot of people ban Juju, but she's one of the most powerful brawlers in ranks. You give a throw us this amount of versatility, rewind back to just Larry, even Larry now, you know the power of a thrower that has good defenses against aggro and juju has exactly that as well with grigri so 
it's just so much to like about her. She's even more versatile than the twins because she can, of course, go over water. She's a vent on bushy maps. So you can just abuse the extra range that has longer than Piper. And then, of course, you go over water. The slow mechanic is so toxic. The two gadgets, either one of them, are just really, really strong. The fact that you can go invisible by just clicking the green button is just crazy to me. It's just, you get a Leon invisibility with a, a gadget, just crazy. Yeah, everything about Juju is just so good. So next up on the list, we have Kenji. So believe it or not, I don't really see Kenji being banned too much in my ranked games. And he's the best brawler in the game, hands down, in my opinion, because there's just so much to like about Kenji. I will say he will get countered more often in ranked than ladder, just because there's a lot of DPS brawlers in ranked, but still, he can go Kenji a lot of time. More so later on in the draft though, just because again, you gotta be careful of those high DPS brawlers, especially in Brubble and Hot Zone, but still, you can just make things happen with Kenji. He's got a broken star power. His gadget allows him to win so many interactions, quick reload speed, and he's actually quite tanky, considering he's an assassin. There's just so many broken things about him. Just max him out already. Moving on to the final brawler on this list, we have Surge. So I was going to put Shade on here, by the way, but I've been playing ranked all day, and Shade's already been banned in all of my lobbies. And I don't even know if Shade will be that good in ranked just because there's a lot of counters to him. But anyways, Surge. Surge is still one of the best brawlers in ranked, mainly because of how good he is against so many assassins. He can just hold carry one versus three. Brubble, gem grab, halt zone. He's going to be your guy. So a lot of times you want to avoid going him earlier on in the draft, mainly because if the opponents are smart, there are, of course, counters to him. So you can just keep your distance, especially with throws, etc. But most of the time, you can just be safe going Surge as long as it's like two, three, four, five in the draft because there's just there's ways he can just adapt to surge but again he's good on grassy maps he can be good in other situations if you switch to the power surge gadget so much to like about surge yeah he's still incredibly meta so that's gonna be it for today's video guys hope you enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'll see you guys next time